Obviously, the the one thing we didn't want to do today is is scare everyone. You raised some really valid points. We also have joining us um, in our audience, Paula. There are um, people out there who've obviously dealt with this. There's a group called the Implant Truth Survivors Committee, and, and Paul, I know you just wanted to really give a shout out to those women out there who maybe have dealt with something like this. Exactly. Like Ann, I went through the same, had the same symptoms. I had my breast implants put in in 92 and revised under the muscle in 1994. And uh, probably two years after that, I started getting chronic sinusitis. I never really thought anything about it. And then in the year 2000, I started getting sores all over my body. And you can see the scars that I'm left with. And uh, they got so bad they were in my scalp and on my back and everywhere. And uh, then in 2008, I got severely ill. And uh, I mean, I knew so I was going to die. So you had your implants die. removed, right? Right. And did, did you get better subsequently? Yes, I still have the neurological, mm -hmm. cognitive issues, um, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, things of that nature. I still deal with that. And, and I think the most important takeaway um, as Dr. Warden alluded to earlier, is he's put in thousands of these. They're done under sterile technique, and in most cases, everything goes fabulously. But there are instances, and it's not just mold growing on your breast implant. It can be other problems and issues. So if you're concerned, it's always best to get it checked out. Uh, I want to applaud the two of you for joining us and, and sharing your story to enlighten folks out there. If you want more information, um, as well as links to to their committee. We're going to have that at our website, thedoctorstv.com. We'll be right back.